Hey, uh, what's up there, Michelle? This video I made for you and not only for you, but also for anybody who maybe has some questions or needs some help with like uh, what we call the foundational principles of our faith and the word of God and the Bible. Um, <clears throat> you know, when I say foundation, it's kind of like, you know, it's like if you have a building and you lay a foundation and you build on top of that. And so if we're a bigger church, I definitely would have like maybe like a class like with foundational principles but because we're such a small church and you kind of ran into some difficulties with this group i just wanted to help you and i hope that that's okay and i pray that um it would bless you i just want to pray for you today lord i pray you bless michelle god i ask that you give her peace lord i ask that you speak to her father god i thank you for her faith and i pray that you meet every need lord god i pray you give her peace god and joy and love in jesus name amen Amen. So this is going to be a short video, um, but just to help you, I'm going to give you some scripture. I'll show you um, on the PowerPoint, the scriptures so that you can write it down. And so um, I'm going to kind of flip the camera a little bit. But the first scripture I want to give you is in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11. And this is what it says. And I'm just going to get the camera so you can see it. It says, for no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. So, you know, there's no other foundation that we need. There's no other foundation that we should lay down apart from the Lord Jesus Christ and his words and the apostles and the teachings. And we have everything we need. And so I just want to encourage you to just keep laying down this foundation that's already been laid up for you and already been built upon. And we just build our faith on this foundation that's already been established. Okay. Um, in Galatians chapter one, verse eight and nine, the, the, the book of Galatians is really cool because there was a lot of people that were trying to um, make the church do all kinds of things like get circumcised and all kinds of things that were based on the Mosaic law. And they were kind of adding to salvation and, and, and the Apostle Paul was really clear. And so one verse that's really good is in Galatians 1, 8 and 9. And this is what it says. It says, but even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you, then what we preached to you, let him be accursed. As we have said it before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you, then what you have received, let him be accursed. And so there's only one gospel. There's only one truth. There's only one Bible. And so the Apostle Paul is very clear. If someone comes and preaches another gospel, um, another truth to you, just remember that you have the word of God and you lay your foundation on that. Okay, so saying that we're going to go to our foundational scriptures um, today, and it's actually what we call the road to Romans. It's really cool. It's all in the book of Romans, and we're going to start with Romans 3.23, and it lays down this foundational principle, and this is what it says. Is this. It says that, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And so Romans is really an awesome book because it just uh, portrays a picture of how, you know, sin has came into this world and we're all under this curse. But at the end of the day, just remember this. Every single one of us have sinned and all of us have fallen short of the glory of God. And there's none righteous not even one. And, you know, it's it's kind of like they give this illustration. I heard someone say it's like if someone had a target, they had an arrow and they were trying to hit a bullseye and you had somebody that was like really, really off the mark, maybe someone intoxicated under the influence, you know, they just totally even miss the, the, they miss it all together and they don't even hit, they don't even hit the, the bullseye or even close to it. You know, they're way off up on top, but then you have someone else that may be right standing and a good person and they get a hold of that bow and they try to shoot it and they still miss the target. And the Bible says this, that everybody's the same, that every single one of us have fallen short of the glory of God. Okay, we are all in this predicament. We all need a savior. And then it, I want to give you another foundational verse. This is really awesome. It's in Romans 6, 23. And this is what it says. The wages of sin is death. And that really means that the payment for sin is death, eternal separation from God. Um, 
really eternal suffering in hell. So the wages of sin is death. If we got to pay for our sin on our own, it is death. But here's the thing I want to emphasize. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And it's really important, Michelle, that you understand that salvation is a gift. And it's a gift that God gives and has given to you and to everybody who believes in God's only son, who receives that Jesus and believes that Jesus died on the cross and rose again on the third day. Look at, I'm going to re repeat that again. We'll read that, and underline it. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So it is precious gift. And I just want you to understand that salvation is a gift. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more. Um, and it's our foundational number one principle. Um, I'm going to kind of just send you some messages. And this is not unlike the Bible because the Bible is actually letters that the apostles wrote to the church. But for me, I'm kind of an audio and a visual learner. So I want to give you, I don't want to, I just didn't want to text you. I also wanted to give you these scriptures to help you. Okay, but salvation is a gift. It's a gift. The gift of God is eternal life. It's a precious gift. And so also in Romans 10, this is what it says. Because salvation is a gift. And this is how you become saved, okay? It's very simple. It says this, If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's all you need to do. That's all you need to do, Michelle. There's people who will tell you that you're not saved or you're not a Christian, but the Bible's very clear. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, which you have, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you are saved, Michelle. You are a Christian. Look at what it says. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. So whenever you feel like less than or you're not enough, or you need to add to this, or you need to do more. Just remember that if you believe in Jesus, the Lord does not put you to shame. And you are not under shame, Michelle. You are a Christian, and you are saved. And you have the Bible to support that, to back that up. So when people question your salvation, or make you feel like you need to do this, or do that, or add to the Word of God, or doubts come in your mind, I just want to remind you these what we call fundamental principles for you to hold on to, okay? And so um, the foundation lesson number one, and I'm just going to send you some lessons about foundation, um, but foundational lesson number one is salvation is a gift, okay? And I want you to write that down. I want you to remember that so that no one will try to steal this gift from you. And I just want you to think about I want you to think about a gift, Michelle, like let's pretend that you bought someone a gift. There is nothing that that person does apart from receiving that gift on their end. You purchase the gift, you buy the gift, you get the gift, and all the person has to do is receive the gift. Now, if they never receive the gift, then they don't have the gift, right? And so the same thing is with salvation. Salvation is a gift. Jesus purchased you. He paid for your sin because everyone has sinned and falls short of the glory of God. But he paid for your sin on the cross of Calvary. Amen. And he paid for your sin and he purchased this gift. He paid for your salvation so that you don't have to pay for it because you can't earn salvation. It is a gift and it's a gift that's from God. Okay. And so just remember that salvation is a gift. And in Ephesians 8 and 9, I want you to stand upon that. And just remember that there's nothing you need to do to earn this gift apart from receiving this gift. We just read that in Romans 10, 9, that you confess with your mouth, you believe with your heart, you receive what Jesus did on the cross. And that's why you're saved. And that's why you're a Christian, Michelle. Look at Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says this. For by grace, you have been saved through faith. Now, grace is God's unmerited favor. There's nothing that you've done. You're saved by grace, Michelle. And you're saved 
but you're saved through faith, right? Because you believe. And that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. It's not of works, lest anyone should boast. So what happens is people will say, well, you need to do this or you need to do that so that they can start boasting about why they're saved. They could say that I'm saved because I did this or I did this, but the Bible is very clear that we're saved only by God's grace. It is a gift of God, Michelle, and it is not of works, lest anyone should boast. If people start boasting and saying they're saved because they did this or did they did that, then they lose what salvation is really about and they lose that gift and it's no longer a gift but it's something that you gotta earn but the bible's very clear remember salvation is a gift and also ephesians 2 10 this is what it says it says for we are his workmanship it's kind of like this it's like um you know, uh, Michelangelo made David, right? David needed to get some clothes on or something. I don't know. But that was kind of his workmanship, his artwork. And you are God's workmanship, Michelle. God saved you and God loves you. And whenever, whenever somebody wants to tear you down or make you feel like you're less than, just remember that you're God's workmanship. You're God's creation, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that you should walk in them. So God saves us for good works, right? So salvation leads to good works, but good works are what we do does not lead to salvation, okay? It's important that you understand that. Salvation leads to good works, and we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works to do good things, right? But we're still saved by God's grace, not by what we do. So salvation leads to good works, but good works will never lead to salvation. And I'm just going to leave you with an illustration and then I'm going to be done with this video. But um, I'm going to give you an illustration of salvation that leads to good works and how good works can't lead to salvation. And this is a fundamental principle. Remember, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23, we're all in the same predicament. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're the greatest good person in the whole entire world, or if you're the worst person in the whole entire world, we're all the same, right? And I just want to give you an illustration. Uh, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life, Romans 6, 23. Romans 10, 9, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And that's it. You receive this gift. But I want to give you an illustration to help you understand that, yes, there are good works after we get saved, but salvation doesn't lead to good works. But, um, I'm excuse me, but good works don't lead to salvation, but we get saved first, and then we have good works behind it. For example, when I got saved, I was a drug addict. I was a liar. That was my lifestyle, and I didn't have any good works behind it. But after I got saved, once I received that gift and became a Christian, then I had good works behind it. But I, I'm going to give you this illustration. It's like this. Pretend that someone wants to be a UPS worker, okay? And they really, really want to be a UPS worker. So they go to the uh, UPS uniform store uh, store, and they buy themselves the little dicky shorts, little tan dicky shorts, little little shirt, you know? They say, I'm going to be a UPS worker. Um, they get a van, right? They purchase a van, and they even get the decals that say UPS on there. And... um. And they have all these things to make them a UPS worker, and they show up to the UPS uh, to the UPS store or the UPS place where they have workers there, and they say, "Hey, um, I'm ready to work." And then the authority, who's the boss, the one who gives the position, says, "Well, you know what? You haven't received this position from the authority, from the boss." And I don't care if you have dicky shorts and look nice or even have your own van. At the end of the day, you have not received that position by the authority that was given. Okay, you've got to first receive the position, right? 
You can't make yourself a UPS worker and you can't make yourself a Christian and you can't make yourself saved. But what you can do is believe in the Bible and hold on to these fundamental principles and say, I'm a sinner and I need a savior and that's why I'm saved, okay? And so I'll give you another illustration. Let's pretend someone does get hired as a UPS worker. The authority actually gives them that position and they become a UPS worker. Then they have to go get the uniform. Then they have to go drop off the drops and do the works that's behind that. But they have to get the position first. I want you to understand that salvation is a gift, Michelle, and you are saved by God's grace. You are not saved by anything that you will ever do. And if anybody tries to question that, just remember the things that I'm teaching you that are not from me that are from the Bible, okay? I'm gonna keep sending you little videos to help you. This is what we call uh, a f foundational principles for you to believe in so that when people try to knock your faith or cause doubt, you could say, no, I know what I believe and what I believe is not something I made up. This is what the Bible says, okay? All right, God bless you.